that they also are also a pretty good sample of, uh, of some of the some of the crazy effects that you can do with location to try and give your dungeons more life. Uh, what we try to include with each tile set in the game is uh, you have the ability to color tint each, each, each of the floor tiles to uh, three different shades of color that you want. You can also do that with the walls as well. And uh, we also try to set it up so that um, you can attach various particle effects to floor tiles as well. So these little green modes that you see dance up in the air, those are things that you can actually attach to various uh, tile sets and dungeons and, uh, and actually in exterior environments too. And you can adjust the frequency of those particle effects, the color, which way they're traveling, how fast they're traveling. And um, I'll give you an example of another particle effects system that you can use to. Also, we allow you to put any, any props from any tile set into any other tile set, just to give the player more flexibility for where they want to put things. Um, out here is an example of what a tile set looks like normally. Uh, and then uh, here's an example of how you can use the particle effects system to uh, create the, uh, the uh, feeling of snow in various environments as well. So if you want to create like a frigid ice temple, uh, you can color the, the walls sort of an icy blue and then uh, and have the, uh, the snow particle effect in the, uh, in the room. The actual uh, interesting thing about this location is the, uh, the floor that I'm walking on is actually water. Then uh, I've reduced to zero choppiness, uh, zero flow, and then I uh, then I uh, put a white text, uh, a white color on it, so it looks like ice now. So it's just another way you can play around with the fluid mechanics too. So then my favorite one is the uh, how you can manipulate the fire effects in various dungeons to. Uh, if you're ever doing a, if you're ever doing like a volcanic level or an area where there's lots of lava flowing around, uh, we have a number of heat, sort of heat distortion effects and heat uh, flame effects you can add to various rooms and dungeons to uh, to make it seem like you're adventuring through a super hot level. Um, here's an example of uh, some of the effects that you can apply to a dungeon room to make it seem like it's super heated. Um, that, uh, that heat distortion effect that you see in the center of the room, that's actually a placeable effect that end users can dump on tile sets to make it seem like uh, you're having a visual representation of how hot it is. You also have like, little lava particle streams, for example, uh, color the walls red, and basically it's something you have a, a room that just feels a lot different from the standard tile set. So, anyway, those are some examples of uh, how you can modify interior environments. Uh, we also try and allow a lot of customization for the uh, creatures and building props you put into an environment as well. So for example, this iron golem in the room here, um, we actually try and make sure that uh, you, a, lot of the, a lot of the creatures in the game, uh, you can temper color and you can also change the scale of those creatures too. So if you want to make, if you want to make a micro version of this guy, you can shrink him down 20% of his height, you can make a henchman and he can follow you around, you have a little golem following you. Or if you want to make this guy a super huge boss monster, you could uh, place him in the game and then, then scale him up to five times his size and dump him in a room and uh, scare the crap out of your players. Um, and we also try and be, we also try to make sure you have that flexibility with uh, with prop placement too. So if you want to do the same thing with buildings or uh, or other things to create a village, like if you want to create like a half one village, you put a bunch of buildings down and shrink them down like twenty five percent of their size. Or if you want to create like a fire giant town, uh, you, can, you can throw those down, color all the buildings red, and expand them up to a super huge size as well. But, um, Anyway, so that's a sample of some of the uh, customization options you can do. And then uh, you know, one other exterior to show you. Um, like I said before, the, uh, the game takes place uh, five years after the, uh, the last expansion pack from Neville Winter War. Um, we are trying to get the companions a much more uh, story-driven role in the game. And uh, we've also uh, imported the, uh, the influence system from Nice Little Republic 2 and Dice and Neville Knights 2. And basically that governs uh, how loyal or disloyal uh, party members are to you, depending on how you act towards others and how you treat them. And uh, they also have their own personalities and agendas that uh, can also uh, be affected by, uh, by influence as well. So basically the more characters trust you and believe in you, the more they're willing to share about their past, share about their backgrounds, the more you can find out about those characters, the more they trust you. On the other hand, if you start losing influence with some characters, the more they distrust you, and eventually if your influence gets low enough, some of your companions will actually leave the party rather than stay with you. Um, so here's an example. And we do try to include a lot of uh, uh, dialogue interaction in the game as well. And uh, there is a lot of use for speech skills like intimidate, bluff, uh, you can even lie to various people to get various effects, and even uh, do taunts and, and uh, dialogue skills. We try to make sure we maintain a lot of the, uh, the interaction that was present uh, in, uh, in some of our more uh, plot dialogue playing games. 
and uh, you can see a lot of the creature scaling effects in this area too. But yeah, our artists really had a lot of fun trying to make uh, a lot of the spell effects extremely visually. Yeah. 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 Uh, we try to preserve as many of the class abilities that are present in the present in 3.5 edition too. So uh, if you ever want to uh, shape shift as a druid, for example, and have a huge giant bear on giant bear fights, uh, everywhere, everywhere nice too allows you to do that. So uh, it's one of, the, one of the other things you can do in the game. Um, that's pretty much it for just a general overview. Um, uh, we're pretty much uh, at the studio. We're basically just uh, playing for the game, looking for bugs, trying to polish it up. And uh, so far, the game seems pretty well on track for October. Um, and then uh, we're guessing, we're guessing the, uh, the amount of play time is about 40 to 50 hours. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Did you guys have any questions you wanted to ask that I can answer? Or?